Stop. Stop it. Hi guys, welcome back to our main homestead. As you can see, Eddie and I are getting to work on some of these timbers. So we did all the really math work yesterday, the groundwork, and we found where level was, where these needed to sit uh, height-wise. These are our posts. And so we're attaching uh, pressure treated on the bottom. So once we got the pressure treated attached, we drill a hole 10 inches deep into the center of this that's going to sit down on the piece of rebar that's down in the basement in the hole that we drilled the other day. And so we have we took a board yesterday and made all the measurements and we have that board marked. And so we just laid it out here and marked it on here and then checked it with a tape measure and it's right. So the hard part is getting everything square. We're using we're using what's called a a beam cutter. Um, and it's very finicky. It vibrates a lot. You have to really be careful to get a square cut because you need square cuts for these things to rest on the ground and to be top to have a good bearing surface for the beams. But we're making it work. Mm -hmm. It's it's very close. Not perfect, but what is when we build it. Um, but anyway, so we're using this. It's just a basically a chainsaw attachment that attaches to a regular circular saw. And it's actually pretty cool, but it's not easy or very fun to use. We did a few test cuts yesterday, and then we've done a couple today just to kind of see what works best. We tried some cuts with a guide, um, and then other ones Eddie just did freehand, and it actually seems to work out better just doing freehand to get a more square cut. For whatever cut. reason, yeah. <laughs> not sure why, but that's what's working for us right now. But it jumps a little, it jumps around a little bit when you first start cutting, so you have to try to really hold it true. But it's working so far. So, like I said, it's these are eight by eight posts. If we get seven and a half inches that are really bearing, that's good enough.
And that's how the pyramids were built. <laughs> about to go grab another timber and we are gonna do the last beam once we put that up we'll do some knee braces and then it'll be time for some floor joists braces and we're checking in with the supervisor to see if it could be quitting time. We're tired. We're ready to go eat some dinner, huh? Is it okay? Is it quitting time? <laughs> yes. <laughs> So I just thought I'd show you what the top of the beams look like. So these two holes here, we took a Forstner drill bit, a Forstner bit, and countersunk them just to give us a little more depth into the post below. These go straight up and down like this. And then over here we took a larger bit, or drill bit, and drilled a hole, and then we drove these, these are eight inch screws, at an angle so that they could go from this beam into this one to pull them together as best we could. And of course, then we did on the opposite side, we did the same thing going in the other direction. These are headlock screws. They say you don't need to pre-drill 
and you don't for the six inch ones and you don't for the eight inch ones that we found out but the 10 inch ones that are going straight down here we could not get them to drive so we had to go run to the hardware store buy a drill bit the right uh, diameter which for these is 3 16 so we could pre-drill the holes that these went in so we could then easily or more easily get these screws to go straight down so these go straight down and lock each beam to the post beneath it and then these tie the two beams together so when they poured the foundation poured the walls they squared it up first and um so once we put the top plate on we have to check square again but we have to check square with keeping the post on the walls in mind and our our plate overhangs four inches all the way around so when we look at the the wall now we can't even see the wall we can see the inside of the wall but we can't see the outside of the wall because it's covered by the plate so we had to do the diagonal and length measurements and be sure that it's right before every before we build because everything above this is going to be supported by the foundation so we finally got it square and on top of the walls to so that the walls can support the post and obviously build up. So now it's time to snap a line, well three lines actually, and the first line will be on one end where we can put our, our rim joist um, and then all of our other floor joists will butt up against that rim joist and, um, and then we'll mark the lines down the front and the back so that we know where the the first and the last joists go whichever direction you want to head in that's basically it that's where we're at so we're we should have the floor done this week um the the floor joist done this week um and then it'll be time to start putting post and beams up on the first floor yep and side note there's no greater testament to a good marriage and still liking each other after you square off a building. Yeah, she yelled, she yelled at me. <laughs> I hate it. I hate it so much. <laughs> Alright, so Eddie and I just got done laying out all the sauna tubes and leveling them and now we are cutting them. So we figured out a pretty easy way to cut them where we need to, so we wanted to share it with you guys. So what I'm saying is you don't have to push real hard, Did you already... but just simple pressure. You can check it. Is that good? Yeah, it looks good to me. So that's a pretty clean cut, right where we need it. Yay! <laughs> Perfect. Out. normally use a 2x6 to try to level, be sure everything was level on these, but um, that's the straightest board we had in the entire property, and it was heavy. 
but we use that same board so you saw us measuring after we cut all the tubes measuring the top of each one just to be sure they're level with each other now um, and they all are it worked out but uh, before we had to use that heavy 2x6 to start on the, the lowest tube and mark level from that and work our way down um, yeah that was kind of difficult we didn't show you that it was too hard to do it without with not showing it and the conversation was pretty similar to that short clip that I showed you last week <laughs> anyway we got them all level cut level we numbered them so we knew where they went um, before we took them out of the hole um, and so now we're gonna cut some rebar to the right height for each tube although they're not all they're all level with each other now they're not all the same length because the rounds and where they sit is not at the same height with each other just thought I'd explain that but anyway so now we're gonna take rebar in down in each one mark it about three inches below the top because we don't want any sticking out the top so we can level the tops off and um, and then we're going to go back and epoxy that rebar in the holes that I drilled um, in the center of each of the rounds. And then we'll be ready to make sure everything's back in line, plumb, and brace it. And it's ready to pour concrete in early in the morning. Right. Fingers crossed. Yeah. We'll see. <laughs> So we've just been putting pieces of rebar down inside the sauna tubes and measuring roughly three inches below the top. We want a flat top so it'll be easy to level the concrete to the top of the sauna tubes that are level that we checked. So we're just measuring a little below the top um, and then this is the last one. Then we're going to epoxy them all into place. Then we'll be ready to brace it and then maybe eat dinner or that'd be great maybe we'll see that would be great What are you looking at me like that for? I wonder what you were filming for. So we gotta take all these, uh, these uh, thingies off. Home videos. Huh? I'm filming for home video. Home videos? Mm. Hi, Mom. <laughs> <laughs> so now we've got some concrete epoxy and the nozzle and a caulking or a concrete epoxy gun, or whatever you want. Now we're going to take all the, the quick tubes or the, the sauna tubes off of the rounds and epoxy all the rebar in. The reason we're doing it that way, just so you know, is this stuff sets really fast. I don't know about this particular one, how quickly, but I've seen it be pushed into the hole and if you don't immediately put a piece of rebar in there you're not getting it in it's it's like concrete and when you open and start using the tube you only have 10 minutes or so to use whatever you're going to use when you stop the nozzle is clogged up and you want the nozzle you have to throw the nozzle away um, and so you won't be able to get any more out without another nozzle and I only have one nozzle so let's hope this works
Bang kok biar gue mau. further than they did. Oh well. You think it's going to be Saturday morning. It's another like kind of misty, rainy, dreary day today. The bugs are out and about, hence my face mask here. <laughs> um, but I think today the focus is just doing as much as we can with the floor. So rim joists, floor joists, blocking, all the things that we can do before we head south to grab subfloor, um, our foam board insulation, and all of that stuff. Hopefully tomorrow or beginning of next week. So um, beginning of next week as well, hopefully early next week, we're gonna get that four foot wall poured on the footer to support the decks, the roof, future, like winter snow loads, all of that stuff. Hopefully gonna get that done, like I said, beginning of next week. And then we are officially done with the concrete people and we can get them out of here and we can just kind of keep chugging along with our build. Um, so yeah, here we go. up another week um, we actually got a lot done this week we started working with wood so you've seen it um, and got a lot done despite taking two days out of the week to, to do more concrete work I mean it had to be done we like we said we decided to go ahead and put the piers in for our porches so we got everything ready and um, we actually had those poured yesterday morning along with the footer that's on that's going to support the decks that are actually part of our house, but on the other end of the house. Um, so we got those done yesterday and everything looks good. They're still all in line and standing. Um, so this week, just to kind of wrap up, we did, we put the two basement posts in, four beams. We did the knee bracing to tie all that together. It's very sturdy. Um, and then we started working on floor joists, kind of got diverted and worked on concrete and then actually today we we're finally putting floor joist up so we've got a few runs of floor joist in hopefully we'll have it done or almost done tomorrow um, but the probably the toughest thing we did was squaring the building that along with the floor joist and the blocking took quite a bit of thinking measuring rethinking more measuring 
rethinking more, <laughs> measuring more, and it just went on and on and on. <laughs> so, but yeah. we got it done, got the square, got the building square, got our lines set, and started working on the floor joists, and we're and making some good we, progress. Yeah. So next week we hope to have the floor joists done. <laughs> Definitely. Hopefully, maybe tomorrow. Um, floor joists done. We've got to make a trip two and a half hours away to get some insulation to wrap the top of the basement wall on the outside um, so that we can go ahead and start backfilling um, in areas and get build bring that up to grade before we block ourselves in with porches um, and then we're gonna grab we got to grab some subfloor on the first floor the finished floor is either going to be tile or some type of hardwood flooring um, so we're gonna put down something like Advantech as a subfloor um, so we've got to go make a trip and go get those two things. Hopefully next week we'll go we'll have those two things installed and we'll be ready to start putting up posts and beams for the first floor leading up to the second floor. Yep. All right. Well, thank you guys so much for watching. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Leave any questions in the comment section below. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. You should, by this point, <laughs> have subscribed. Um, and then don't forget to hit the notification bell if you want to be notified when new videos come out. And we'll see you guys next week. Thanks, guys.